story of Pablo Escobar. Pablo Escobar, in full Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria, born December 1st, 1949, was a Colombian citizen who was born in Rio Negro, Colombia. Colombian criminal who, as a head of Medellin cartel, was arguably the world's most powerful drug trafficker in the 1980s and early 90s. Soon after his birth, Escobar's family, his father, a farmer, and his mother, a school teacher, moved to Envigado, Colombia, a suburb of Medellin. While still a teenager, he became a life of crime. His early illegal activities included selling fake diplomas, smuggling studio equipment, and stealing tombstones to resell. Escobar also stole cars, and it was this offense that resulted in his first arrest in 1974. As the cocaine industry grew in Colombia, thanks in part of its proximity to Peru, Ecuador, and Bolivia, major growers of coke, from which cocaine is derived, Escobar became involved in drug smuggling. In the mid-1970s, he helped found the criminal organization that later became known as the Medellin Cartel. His notable partners included the Ochoa brothers, Juan David, George Luis, and Fabio. Escobar served as the head of organization which focused largely on the production, transport, and sale of cocaine. By the mid-1980s, the Medellin cartel dominated the cocaine trade with Escobar wielding incredible power and wealth. According to some reports, he was worth approximately $25 billion, which supported a lavish lifestyle that included a 7,000-acre estate called Hacienda Napolis, named after Napolis, Italy, in Colombia. It reportedly cost $63 million and featured a soccer field, dinosaur statues, artificial lakes, a bullfighting arena, an airstrip, and a tennis court. The property also had a zoo that housed giraffes, hippopotamuses, and camels among other animals. In addition, Escobar funded various projects to aid the poor, earning him comparisons to Robin Hood. That perspective helped him win election to an alternate seat in the country's congress in 1982. However, such philanthropic quacks were offset by Escobar's well-known ruthlessness. He handled problems with a platter, a plomo, meaning silver, which is bribes, or lead, which is bullets. In addition to rival drug traffickers, notably in the Cali cartel, his victims included government officials, policemen, and civilians. In 1989, the cartel reportedly placed a bomb aboard an airplane in an attempt to kill an allied informant. More than 100 people were killed and threats of extradition to the United States, which, as the destination of most of the cartel's drugs, had come to view Escobar as a top target in its war on drugs. And this drew even greater retaliation from Escobar, who reportedly said that we would rather have a grave in Colombia than a jail cell in the U.S. Amid the growing bloodshed, a massive manhunt was undertaken to find Escobar. While the government also began negotiations for his surrender, in June 1991, on the same day that the Colombian Congress voted to forbid extradition in the country's new constitution, Escobar surrendered and was subsequently jailed. His imprisonment, however, had little effect on his criminal activities and his lifestyle. He was allowed to build a luxurious prison, which became known as La Cathedral. Not only did the facility include a nightclub, sauna, waterfall, and a soccer field, it also had telephones, computers, and a fax machines. However, after Escobar tortured and killed two cartel members at La Cathedral, officials decided to move him to a less accommodating prison. Before he could be transferred, Escobar escaped custody in 1992. The Colombian government, reportedly aided by the U.S. officials and rival drug traffickers, launched a manhunt on December 2, 1993, and Escobar celebrated his 44th birthday, allegedly enjoying cake, wine, and marijuana. The next day, his hideout in Medellin was discovered. While Colombian forces stormed the building, Escobar and a bodyguard managed to get to the roof, and a chase and a gunfight ensued and Escobar was fatally shot. Some, however, speculated that he took his own life. After he died, the Medellin cartel soon collapsed. A larger-than-life figure, Escobar inspired numerous books, movies, and TV projects in the decades after his death. Some of the books published about him include Pablo Escobar, My Father by John Pablo Escobar, Killing Pablo by Mark Bowden, Beyond Narcos by Shatan Atwood, 
Loving Pablo, Hating Pablo by Virginia Vallejo, Surviving Pablo Escobar by John Jairo Valesquiz. Valesquiz was identified as one of the foremost hitmen of the Medellin cartel. He confessed to 257 personal killings and also admitted to arranging over 3,000 killings. He also helped to plant the plane bombing that killed more than 100 people. From 1992 until 2014, John served out a prison sentence on charges of terrorism, drug trafficking, extortion, conspiracy for, for terrorist purposes, and murder. He had received a sentence of 30 years, the maximum provided for under Colombian penal law. During 2000 and 2001, John was involved in armed clashes in La Mortadelo prison. In 2008, he was sentenced to 12 years for other judicial proceedings against him. On August 22, 2014, he received a probation for having served three-fifths of his sentence. At age of 52, he was released on August 22, 2014 after 23 years and three months in prison. In 2018, he returned to prison on extortion charges and subsequent conviction and in 2020 died while incarcerated. Surviving Escobar is based on the memories of John Jairo Velasquez, also known as Pope. In 2015, Velasquez released a book, Surviving Pablo Escobar, Pope the Hitman, 23 years and 3 months in prison, about his experiences. According to Velasquez, he reached the end of Crazy and Taltama's career in organized crime. When he was about to turn his life around, inspired by the love of a woman, he writes that he was inspired to surrender himself to the authorities in order to protect his girlfriend, Angela Morales, from the papers, a rival gang that was determined to stop Escobar's Medellin cartel. According to the New York Times, Valesquez served over 20 years for planning a hit on a Colombian presidential candidate. Soon after Escobar's death, the subsequent fragmentation of the Medellin cartel, the cocaine market became dominated by the rival Cali cartel until the mid-1990s when its leaders were either killed or captured by the Colombian government. The Robin Hood image that Escobar had cult cultivated maintained a lasting influence in the Medellin. Many there, especially many of the city's poor, who Escobar had aided while he was alive, mourned his death, and over 25,000 people attended his funeral. Some of them considered him a saint and prayed to him for revealing.